Well, why don't we go ahead and get started? Um, so this session is about finding the love. Um, it's a, uh, we're of course celebrating Valentine's Day, holidays, the purpose of holidays is so we don't feel like life is one endless monotony, right? And this holiday is a sweet holiday. We can love ourselves as much as anyone else. So um, it's interactive today. Um, it's always interactive in the water cooler chats. If you don't wanna talk out loud, uh, put notes up in the chat. We have the chat open. Um, okay, so how do you express affinity to someone else, another person? So how does your the constituency for your organization do it? And just go ahead and chat away um, with thoughts and comments about what you think. And I'm going to just start presenting. Um, I'm going to start presenting my ideas as well. All right, you ready? Okay. So. To express affection or affinity with an organization, we're really going to wind up talking about engagement, and that's the that's the whole point of the conversation. Um, Gala is on with us to interrupt me with questions and uh, comments that you have. So, but I'm going to look straight into my camera. Um, the first thing is is that they become aware of you and click right. The other is then they start interacting with you, like or forward. Okay. Um, I'm suddenly reminded of a story of a guy who talked about his three-year-old son walked up to his television and tried to swipe click swipe right. Right, so we're getting there, right? Isn't that, uh, there's a joke on television about some kind of uh, dating app where you swipe right or swipe left, right? They like you and they forward you. Um, deeper engagement is they mention you or they share you. Hey, I mean, so we have a, we have a, a fried food, fried fish restaurant here called Doug's Fish Fry. And Doug's um, sends out one of their trucks to different places. And there are signs up on the street that says Doug's Fish Fry will be here on Friday at. And so people just converge on the Doug's Fish Fry truck at that time. That is a mention or a share. All right. But then they also respond to you. And that's the first time that you are being directly impacted, right? Than when they respond to you directly. Or even better, they initiate a conversation with you. Okay. And they show up, right? So it's easy for me to sit on my easy chair and do items dump one through five, right? Do, 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 right? But if I actually get out of my chair, put on clothes and my mask and go attend, then I'm saying something. And then when I volunteer, I'm saying something even deeper. I'm making a commitment. And once we say a commitment, we're into something big, right? And when I give away my cash, that's something big. An investment, as you know, is, is major gifts or planned gifts. And that's when I'm permanently cementing myself um, in association with your organization. For instance, the only organization that is mentioned in any of my bequest materials is my alma mater. And actually, Linda, that you met last time, she wrote and said she can't come. She's my engagement officer. Isn't that great? I have a gift officer. So the first thing to know is um, I was on a cruise and, and a woman from Australia was explaining um, uh, influence to me. Okay, this was before influence was like an online thing. <laughs> and it's finding what the other person wants and then offering it in trade for what you want, right? And now the, so that begs the question, are we manipulating? Well, we're only manipulating if we're going to cheat them out of the thing that they want, right? Okay, so are we lying to them? Well, we're lying to them if we're not going to trade what we want. Okay, but if I have something to give and I find out that I can give that to you in exchange for something that I need, right? I can give you cash in exchange for chocolate. Then um, that's a moment of influence. The point is I need to find you. I need to find that you want cash. And that's the place where we talk about um, how do we measure that, right? My inner statistician suddenly goes crazy and wants to measure that. So let's start with uh, what, what the donor, the customer journey calls awareness, right? Branding awareness, right? So who's clicking on your website? Now, those of us who spend any time in marketing look at this all the time, but what's missing? So what's missing is a connection to an individual person, right? So I know that I don't know why, but on Wednesdays at 5 a.m., people look at my website. 
Like what's going on on Tuesday night? If you're like, oh, I want to talk about analytics, right? I don't know, but it's great. And it used to be Tuesday around 10 o'clock. So we used to post a lot on Tuesday around 10 o'clock. Now Gayla and her team take care of that for us, right? That's all I know though. I don't know who these people are. And I've been on this quest along with a whole lot of other people that I've spoken to at um, the Association for Advancement Services Professionals, the Drive Conference and the APRA Analytics Conference. How do we connect a person clicking on my website to a name? Okay. There are services that you can buy. I have no idea how expensive they are. Um, but one thing I do know is that there are some websites that I visit when all of a sudden I get a, an email at my stop email address and an email in my personal email address. I also know there are websites if I give them my personal email address, suddenly they're writing to me at both of them. So those tricks are out there. Now, how do I feel about that? Well, the minute I notice that an organization, that a company does that to me, I unsubscribe because I feel it's disingenuous, right? But you can, you can do that. And there are organizations that will do this with social media, but I don't know about website clicks. But that's why there are lots of sales of portals, right? So come into our portal. Um, what's the alumni portal that competes with Blackbot's alumni portal? It's gonna come to me. Um, right away. Is that it? Yes, one one of those graduate. Yeah, graduate. Yeah, that's the uh, that's one of them. I don't know. I keep thinking blob, mob, snob. So, um, I think it has a lum in it. Um, anyway, so they'll sell you portals because then you have to authenticate in order to get to look at the good stuff, right? That's what LinkedIn does to us, right? And and any association I belong to, if I want to go to the AFP card catalog, I have to tell them that I was there, right? Sign up forms. We were talking about this this morning. Sign up forms is a way of um, uh, getting people to understand, to getting people to give you themselves, right? And as the news programs have told us hundreds of times, information is the thing that companies are selling right now. This to me is the worst example. I go to this website and they're like, you have to accept our cookies. And you know that a cookie is they put it on your computer and then they can follow, you know, whenever you're there. Now they're tracking you, you're at least your computer. They have your ISP address. So you, a little bit better. Um, here's try for free. So I get to the web page and they immediately want me to give them the, my email before I'll download anything or do anything. We're a little like that. If you want our white paper, you're going to give us some contact information. And then the way that I consider the best is this version of influence. If I give, this is the Laboratory of Ornithology at Cornell, and I think I speak about them at every presentation I do because this is brilliant, right? If I, um, I, can, I can find more birds, I can see how I can share my sightings on the bottom here. So I can click in there and I can say, I saw, you know, and I don't know what the birds are outside my window, right? But I, I saw, blah, blah, blah. And then, um, and then now if I'm going to share my settings, they're going to say, oh, by the way, who are you? Because we want to be able to know, you know, how many robins are in North Dakota. And by the way, North Dakota turned out to be significant to their membership um, when I did an analytics job for them. So I get something first, right? If you want this, you know, if you, if you, if you want to like listen to the, our bird sounds, like, you know, just give us your name and uh, email address and you'll be in the family. That to me is a sign up form that works. Okay, and then um, this, of course, you're always going to hear by Habitat because I'm on the board, um, the local one. Um, this is a, this is just you know we're offering this tools and techniques training, and and let me tell you that's the only place that ever taught me to be able to use a hammer and not hurt myself. There is a short video, about six seconds, of me learning how to hammer, um, and it was wonderful. And I gave them my name and email address to learn how to do it, right? So sign up for our newsletter. If I'm going to sign up for our newsletter, the newsletter has to be interesting. I don't. Uh, I get four or five newsletters in my inbox every day. More than more than that every week. Um, the one that I read the most often is um, oh, I don't even remember the name. It's like the it's a finance blog. 
okay? And maybe Deal Book by Andrew Sorkin. But as you can hear, I don't read them every day. And so if somebody sends me a newsletter um, and it's just like, hey, give us something, give us something, give us something, I'm kind of, I'm done. I unsubscribe. And unsubscribing, I mean, I don't even have to look somebody in the eye to be offensive to them and walk off on them, right? So that's the frustration too. All right. Likes and follows. Um, Facebook goes up and down about privacy settings, right? So it used to be you could use Node Excel, which is a, a, a social media aggregating graphing nifty thing. You'll see one illustration from it today. And you could download all your Facebook fans. Now you have to own the page to download your Facebook fans, but you can, okay? Um, but who follows you on Facebook, right? Who, I did this when I was researching for this presentation, I said, um, who are my LinkedIn contacts? Because I want to know who they are. And I want, because it gives me a lot of information about my audience. Now think about it. You're the, you're the small city symphony orchestra. And you want, you have all these people hooked up on you on LinkedIn because they know that that's where you post your um, program, right? And pictures of famous people who are visiting. So you down, they download their network and now they know people, how they're related, right? So if this is a, I don't know if Cleveland has a symphony orchestra. If this is a Cleveland symphony orchestra. They download all these people. There, there could be people with a common last name. There could be people in a common neighborhood. And there certainly could be people who are related to each other, right? And once you start mixing that in with the ticketing date, data, now you've got um, a really robust collection of who your fans are. And, it, and the people who are your biggest fans may or may not be the people that you've been asking for a gift. Okay, and then uh, um, Instagram used to not allow you to download your um, people who followed you. I don't know if they do. This company says they can. Questions or comments? Greg, what did you use at the Rochester Institute of Technology? Oh, Evertrue. Evertrue is social media. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, in fact, the, the founder of Evertrue was an RIT grad, which is uh, why we ended up using them. Oh, okay, but they're pretty good. Like, I like their stuff. Okay, we're not a partner of theirs. We're, we are a referral partner to some firms. We're not with Evertrue, so. Okay, in 2010, this book came out. I can't remember if it's called The Race for Relevance or Fundraising Online. It's on my bookcase. I was looking for it. Um, and one of the things that they said in the introduction is that organizations no longer create their own content right? All of the content about you is not under your control. Now that's about you personally too, right? Thank you, Facebook, right? So, um, so when your audience creates content, not only do you want to catch it in case the content is something you want to address, right? Like a, a recent hotel that I stayed at, I put, a, uh, I put a bad review up about it in TripAdvisor three times trying to get it to post because I wanted to warn everybody off about it, right? That's audience created content, okay? And so the first one of the easiest one to track are comments and mentions. So for here's my Habitat again. The Habitat, I did a download of comments, mentions, and likes and discovered that when Habitat used the word commitment in their posts, they got a lot more attention than when they used the word participation, right? What do you participate in? Ruthie's talking, but she's muted. I was talking to myself. I said, usually nothing fun. <laughs> you participate in sports, on a diet, right? You know, <laughs> if you like sports, that's great. Um, that's, that's actually very healthy. I don't know why I say these things and I have to back them up. I'm sorry. <laughs> Backpedaling is like my biggest skill right now. So anyway, but if you say commitment, that becomes your part one of us. You become special right? We need you to participate in the rally on Saturday, right? Well, no, I'm going to be three miles away from a bathroom, right? Not interested. So, okay. So we had our, we had our gingerbread event. People, uh, one person actually put up a note, a great kit and a great cause, okay? And we had uh, eight people who liked it. And see the shares? I mean, come on, beat cookies. 
at Christmas time, right? You can taste the gingerbread right now if you're if you're someone who does that does does that as part of a Christmas celebration that you may celebrate. Here I go again. Okay, the other one is when people comment. This is a, a mention uh, where uh, we're doing a virtual water cooler chat next month, and Jen mentioned it, so we got her to say so. When I, whenever our, my AFP board and it, when my local opera chapter, whenever we post an event on the social media, the board members spread it, right? When now super spreader events are, are thought of as bad, but we were trying to spread, but it was a message, it was electronic. Okay. So the other piece is you wanna find your influencers. These are called your connectors in the book, um, The Tipping Point. Okay, and so these are people, this person in the middle here is someone you want because this person is probably the, the head of your organization, right? But who are these people? This person, this blue person has lots of friends, but also has lots of friends who have lots of friends who have lots of friends, right? Can you get us 15 people to come to our rally, right? That's the important piece. And so when you can get there, it gets it, uh, when you can start relating this, and this is the node Excel graph that I wanted to show you. Once you can start understanding relationships and we are gonna put up a node Excel course in our uh, online training, because this is this tool, I love this tool for lots of different things, okay? Um, once you start understanding the relationships and you understand that um, uh, Billy is Bobby's cousin, and Bobby is married to Susie, who is the major gifts prospect in your town that everybody wants to get in front of. And Billy is your chair of the board. Billy's been wondering, when are you gonna notice that, right? It's not just that, but it's also, uh, one of the things that, one of the affinity groups I'm on is the radio station from my college years, okay? The guys from the 70s classes started it and they talk about equipment and they talk about you know the music and because, the music was good. I was there in the early 80s. We were still had a robust um, uh, radio station and it sort of drifted off in the 90s. But we're still in, that's an affinity group. My class year is less, uh, is less of an interest to me because I went to school with people who were class years above me and below me. But my affinity group is the radio station. So you wanna know those relationships, right? I mean, if you rode on a bus and you changed on the bus with your marching band buddies and you played with them, you wanna know, okay? Blog posts that mention you, you wanna see these. You absolutely wanna see these because at a minimum, you wanna be able to address anything negative, right? But at the same time, this particular blog post, when uh, this particular uh, comment or this particular event is being written about everywhere or being used as an example of, and then you can borrow their language if you want. And then responding, comments on your website, responses to invites. Now, here's the thing. I often find that a, 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 an indicator of a higher level annual fund donor is somebody who says no to the event because they take the time to respond to a cattle call event. Isn't that cool? And if I answer the survey, it's me taking time. I mean, think of how many surveys. I mean, I get on I don't know, probably what a quarter of the websites that I get on, the, I get to there and if they're not asking me to accept cookies, they're saying, will you take a survey when this is over? And I'm like, can I look at anything first before you ask me, start asking me for a favor, you know? So if I answer a survey, I'm telling you something. I'm, I'm telling you that my time is worth your time. My time is worth, your organization is worth my time, right? And then if people comment on your blog post, they're actually read it. <laughs> Think of all the things that you read all day, right? And so you read a blog post. Okay. So this is where we are. Questions or comments on any of this? Uh, Go ahead, Elizabeth. Hello. Hello. You're you're not muted, Elizabeth, if you're talking to somebody else. Okay, I'm gonna mute you, Elizabeth. Thank you. All right, so <laughs> that was not a question or comment. Question or comments?
Okay. All right, so let's talk about engagement then, right? So once we put all this together, we're putting together, we've got clicks and we've got likes and we've got, I actually took the time to write to you. And then I actually took the time to look at your content, watch your video and then write something, right? I took the time and think about the amount of time, right? Oh, look at that versus, you know, I would like to thank you for your extraordinary work on the achievement of improving the sidewalks in our town, right? That's important, right? It reminds, if you think about looks, right? Think about the last thing that you noticed that you thought was remarkable. Do you wanna share that with us? Um, for me, I was driving through New Jersey. Uh, so if you're familiar with the culture of New Jersey, all these, you know, you see all these bank, um, these bank ads on billboards, right? And then there's an asterisk about the APR. This billboard said, we don't need no stinking asterisk, you know, 2% for savings, right? That sticks with me, right? If I was, if I lived in New Jersey, I would have written down the name of that bank because of that attitude, I like it, right? So what are some, something, the last thing that you saw that introduced you to something new that stuck with you? I'm looking over to my right because that's where I have all your videos, all your... Greg is thinking. Somebody rescue Greg, he's still thinking. Do you guys have boring lives? Are you all just like, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shy group, okay. Yeah. The last thing that you saw that was interesting, Greg. Oh, I mean, Well, I have to say the last the last thing I, I've I've seen I think that was interesting is that uh, um, we're there was a taco truck rodeo down here. Uh, and I live in I live in Tucson, Arizona, and yeah, we actually most taco trucks stay in the same place all the time here. So having a talk having a group of taco trucks is a really big thing for us. And I knew that would make Marianne laugh because. There you go. Talk about truck it, was, it was in benefit of a local high school, you see. So I was mm -hmm. thinking of that as a nonprofit engagement type. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there was a there reason was for me to do that. Okay, nobody's going to top that. Yesterday, by the way, I got in the mail from my habit, local habitat. It was, it was a card. Um, and it said, see all the love that you have shared with your gift. And it was a scratch off. I've never gotten a thank you card as a scratch off. And it wasn't, you know, you get 5% off the things you should buy from us. I scratched it off. It was a photo of a family going into their house for the first time. And I was in that house helping, right? I didn't do a lot of building, but I was having meetings in there and doing, uh, you know, fundraising things in there. And there was another photo of a family getting helping with and there was a photo of all the volunteers helping to build the last house that we're building this year that was that was unique for me anybody else want to share one can nobody can i don't think anybody can beat uh taco rodeo <laughs> taco truck rodeo <laughs> but <laughs> But the last thing that you noticed that was unique, right? So the last thing that I, one of the things that I, uh, one of the ways that I'm dealing with the stress of the pandemic is apparently crying at commercials. I'm not a big crier, but apparently these, there are commercials that just send me bawling. I don't know if you've seen the one where the blind kid gets on the bus and he sits next to the other kid and they introduce themselves to each other. I see that commercial at least once a day. I see lots of nodding. I see that commercial at least once a day. I still don't know what product is being sold in that commercial. For me, it's the one with the animals and Sarah McLaughlin singing. It's always the one that like, I gotta turn it off. I can't watch that. Oh, I, I can't remember which, no, that, I don't that, remember that which animal rescue intense, it's for, but that's yeah. the one. Yeah. <laughs> so for you and I, Ruthie, it did not deepen our engagement. It actually, um, it actually sealed our engagement off. Yeah. Cause I'm like, that's a very sweet commercial, but um, if it isn't about, some kind of social group, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, last night I saw a car commercial that was about making the world better. I'm like, what? 
And then my wife said, it's an electric car. Oh, okay. okay. All right. So here's when your audience initiates, okay? They send you emails, cards, letters, phone calls. I have seen cards sent to gift officers from prospects, okay? It's sitting in their central file. I mean, I really hope nobody gets rid of central files, right? That big file that has things back from the 50s about somebody, okay? They send you a surprise gift. If you are the charity of choice when somebody's making an honorarium, or you know, people do at the holiday time, they do gifts to organizations and somebody's honor. If you're that charity of choice, that's a, you wanna know that, right? So you're not cultivating the people who are being honored, you're telling them how fabulous they are. You're cultivating the person who makes those gifts, right? If I tell you that I moved, you don't have to hear it from the NCOA. If I tell you that I moved, then you are important to me. Think about what the, F, the thought, the effort, the energy, the time. I have to go to the post office. I have to get those forms. I have to discuss it with the postman. Yesterday, I was doing something with the post, where I went into the post office. I had to talk to the postman about the Super Bowl because I live in a small town. <laughs> you know, that was effort and energy. I had to get it back into my car in the snow, right? And any new information, right? And later I'll, I'll show the information score and announcements, right? So when I find wedding announcement, of course, you know, I had page after page of, you know, buy a wedding announcements from us. So when I finally said, Johnson announces their engagement of, to see if I could get an actual wedding announcement, I ended up with uh, Boris Johnson. <laughs> so, so usually I'm supposed to stay out of politics. I'm still staying out of politics. It's just, this is, you know, if, if I sent this to you because I'm proud of it, that's important, okay? So let's talk about the information score. So Peter Wiley in his book in the 90s uh, talked about a simple score. If they have this, this, this. And that was his way of helping it, right? information score is an indicator of somebody's willingness to give. They tell you who their spouse is. Oh, I'm getting connect, internet connection is unstable. Am I still here? Yes, but you're choppy. Okay. okay. So I will, so, okay. So they tell you that they're married. Married. And these days in the nineties, when I first did this, we didn't have email, social media handles or cell phones, right? But we do now, right? So what are all my addresses? Where all the places, a lot of people have correspondence with me on LinkedIn. They don't, they skip the whole figuring out what my email is, right? If I tell you who my children are, I trust you with my children's names. And that's a big deal. You know, I have a brother 10 years younger than me. If Whenever he wanted to go somewhere, we're like, no, you'll get kidnapped, right? It's, a, I trust you with my children's names, okay? And if I tell you where I work, I, 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 I am proud of my relationship with you enough to tell you where I work. And then if I give you my matching gift money, well, you know, okay. So let's do one piece of really geeky stuff. This is a project I was just doing for a client who's getting ready for their giving day. And the question was who gives to giving day? That was the question. And so one of the things that I did, and so I'll explain this so I, before I get to explaining what average empty fields means, okay, is I found 1200 pieces of, um, indicators for engagement, right? And once I had these 1200 pieces for everybody, I counted how many of them were blank or no, right? So I did not go to this event. I did not give you my cell phone. I did not volunteer. I did not. Now, some of these 1200 pieces was a single event name split into lots of different words. So we could use the words as indicators, right? That's how we got to 1200. So don't panic. This, this um, organization is not wearing itself out doing events. So if we look over here, this see this cluster one? This is the number of empty fields. In other words, there are fewer and fewer, on this side, there are fewer and fewer fields where they engage somehow. Okay, and the geeky part of this is I'm using the cluster, k-means clustering to understand it. So very few fields where they engage somehow. Here's their gift count. That was the one thing the program decided to compare them to. So we have some who have a lot of gift count. But you see cluster one, there's, uh, what is it? 114,000 people in there. They have 888 empty fields, which tells me they have 320 fields where they have some kind of engagement, okay? They're, they give an, less than one gift. 
Um, they gave less than $5 to Giving Day last year, and their highest gift on average um, is 132. These are the non donors. So, are they related? To, this is by way of saying is there something that you can find out that gives you, if you did this exercise yourself, and you could do this much more simply than I did? Of course, I had to do it the hard way because I like that. But you could just say, all of the events that they did not attend or respond to, all of the events they were invited to, and then the, that percentage of attendance, right? So you can look at it as, a, instead of having to turn your brain around three times, right? You just go in a positive state. And then the percentage of those people who are donors versus a percentage of your entire population who are donors. Because you are now describing the engagement, the next engagement step, which is to get them to come to something right, or do something. And then, you know, you'll go on from there. Isn't that fun? I love my job. Okay, now the last slides that we have, I'm checking the time. The last slides that we have, yeah, we have plenty of time. Where we usually start is the investment piece. I want major gifts, go get me major gifts. I gotta have a major gift, give me a million dollars, right? Or if you can't get that, give me annual fund. Give me, give me money. Give me, you know, give me gifts, 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 gifts. That's where we usually start. But the question is, is how do we get people to like us enough that they're willing to do that? It used to be you had to just put out a television commercial and people would go buy your brand of, right? Um, now uh, people have to trust it. And the other thing is, is other people are telling these people, excuse me, that your brand is this and that, right? The gentleman from Papa John's, people started putting up photos of him hunting in Africa as a way of trying to get all the rest of us to stop going buying Papa John's. Now I don't eat pizza, so it didn't affect me, but I was like, that's cancel culture, right? So we wanna think about engagement in the way that we do things, right? And how do we bring people forward? Now here are some ways of understanding someone's affection or affinity through their giving. One of them is, their giving escalates. So Velocity, um, Andy Rear of um, the Rear group that now got sold to Blackboard, Andy Rear taught me this when he and I worked together on a project at Carnegie Mellon. He was one of our consultants. Um, and last year I saw somebody presenting this concept. So it finally permeated the market, <laughs> the industry. Um, but it's it's take the take the prospects giving over the prior three years, right? So you fiscal year 21, 2019, get the average of that and then take fiscal year 21, the last full year and divide this into that. What do you have for a ratio? So if I gave 50, 50, 50, but I, I love you guys and I finally got a raise and so I gave you hundred, now my velocity is 100% or one to zero, one, one, 1 to zero, right? And so that's what these are measuring. This is, uh, my velocity is less than one. So I gave you less. And then my velocity up here becomes two, two times. So I went from 50, 50, 50 to 150 because I doubled my money. No, I'm sorry, 50, 50, 50 to 100. I went up two. Yeah, Marianne, the statistician, thinks she could do math while she's doing her presentation, right? So, so this is an it's the what is the what did the what did I do to raise my hand to say I'm about to get big on you and this was inspired uh, the study was also actually supported by the core data groups work uh, way back in the late 90s and early 2000s when they said if I give steadily for 10 years then the 11th year my giving bumps this is measuring when that when that bump happens so that I can understand when my prospect um, is ready to jump into major gifts or just raise your hand. Can you imagine you give 50, 50, 50, 100, you get the same thank you note, nothing else. How would you feel, right? The other thing I uh, have been trying to introduce to the market, but I keep calling it the blackjack score. So I wonder if I'm gonna get in trouble for not being thoughtful about that. But the this is the years that I went up versus years that my giving went down. My giving is steadily rising over a period of five years, right? Then I'm going to have a, a blackjack score, an up or down score of five. If I, if I gave 50, 55, 65, 75, 80, right? I have a score of five. If I gave 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, I have a score of zero. My giving remains the same. 
This was inspired by the movie 21, where they talk about counting cards, right? Um, when is the deck flush and when is the deck not? But if I'm escalating giving, I have to be recognized at a very minimum for that. But who are the people who are escalating giving? And then how many years ago did they tell you what their marriage was or their kids' names or their, you know, right? Or who their friends are? Wouldn't it be cool to know this? So I'm sorry, Ruthie, I finally read your note. So then the next thing is, is people who jump from one place to another. I have finally made it into the big league, recognition level jumpers. Um, there was a, a symphony where I was subscribed to and they opened up a new uh, reception room for um, intermission. And it was for thousand dollar donors and better. So somebody stood up front with a, with a host stand you know, and you had to be on their list to get into that room. And I peeked into the room and I said, how much are the drinks in there? And he said, oh, you're still paying for drinks. And I'm like, okay, see you later. Right. It was just, but there were three people in there. And then after a while they closed it. <laughs> it was worth a try though. Cause when I go to the symphony, I'm wearing my nicer clothes. I want to be seen, I, you know, um, that sort of thing. Right. But if somebody jumps recognition levels, they're telling you something either about their wealth or about their affinity for you. And you want to figure out what it is. I've actually called someone and said, thank you for going from 500 to $1,000. And he stayed at $1,000 after that. All right, we're going to wrap it up. Okay, and we can chat after that if you, if you want. Just remember that we're really talking about this one piece of the donor journey, the noticing piece, right? How do we, what do we, how do we track what's working, right? And that's the piece where we want to get it, right? What is working? Um, how do we? How do people notice us, right? And there are actually some companies where they work on controversy. They create a controversy, so you go. There was a. I heard about. There was a. I listened to a lot of podcasts about finance, and one of them was about. Um, there was a movie that came out, and a, a, a woman's movement stood up against the movie and the guys who did the movie loved that because it meant that, you know, they would get, uh, they got lots of attention. Lots of guys went and were curious, right? The abandoned Boston theory, right? Um, or Oscar Wilde, you know, the worst thing, the only thing that's worse than uh, being talked about is not being talked about, right? Um, but it's, it's, uh, Greg, what is the Streisand effect? Oh, that's 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 an example of that that very phenomenon. Apparently, uh, Barbara Streisand didn't want anyone taking pictures of her mansion in Malibu, um, and of course, that pronouncement made everyone want to go take pictures of her mansion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not a thing you say to an American. Right. Okay. So, so this piece of noticing is how we start bringing people in to who we are. Um, when I'm talking about association or even the habitat work, the question is, how do we brand ourselves um, such that people have heard of us? Um, and because when, when often the first thing people hear of when they hear habitat is we give away free houses. And the answer is no. Actually, people help the owner build their own house, right? So we have to, we're always doing that education piece. But think about it as, hey, uh, you know, for 10 bucks, you can have a gingerbread kit, make gingerbread cookies, pretend that you're virtuous and eat them right that's influence right okay so that's my presentation on this topic our next topic is going to be march 4th um, our uh, our research partner firm uh gen uh, aspire research group and prospect research institute uh is sending their owner jen fellow over to hang out with us again and talk about relationship mapping but we have a few extra minutes if you want to if you want to chat The link for sign up for that water cooler chat is already set up. I put the link um, in the chat. So if anybody wants to go ahead and, and sign up for it. Oh, thanks. So what do you all think? Are, are there pieces of this that you want to implement? You guys are shy. Well, if, if I could, if I could mention one thing that that um, we learned a while back, 
uh, when when we were kind of doing this this engagement score at RIT, mm -hmm. um, some some um, engagement opportunities are more important than others, and so I think you know it's Im important to kind of identify that when it comes to which which engagements lead to lead to major gifts. Um, you know, at, at first we were looking at event scores that were all the same. Right. And then we realized, you know, some events draw what my ex-wife used to call the hot dog and coke crowd. Yes. And, and others. I and, call them wedding crushers. Right. Yeah, that's another yeah. good, that's, a, that's another way of describing it. And, and others would, would uh, bring in what my boss used to call the heavy hitters. Right. And kind of learning which events did which. Um, and we found that some events actually were negative uh, towards giving major gifts. So, uh, so I guess right. you know, waiting is important with, with this process too. Right, and that's so that's the that's that, that's actually why we saw that cluster analysis that I showed you. That was the waiting for me. We did when I when I worked at Mount Holyoke College. We did an engagement scoring project. We didn't have a lot of data that was social media, you know, how many click throughs, that kind of, we had not a data to, to use. Mm -hmm. We only had events and giving, which isn't grand amounts of data. And the fact that we, like you were saying, do we have their email? Do we have their phone number? Do we have their like certain pieces of information? So right. we were using those as sort of the data points. And then we, we weighted each piece, scored it, you know, we did some math was yep. not nearly as extensive or as um, specific or probably as good as what you're doing, Marianne, but we were doing it in Excel. There were five yep. of us doing it on top of our regular jobs and we were doing it without any buy-in from the top. So yeah, you know, still put it you together were... and it worked really well to give us a way to at least slay some dice. So we did it even without certain pieces of data because it was somewhere to start. So yep. you know, so for, for certain things, like you don't have to have everything, but you gotta start somewhere. Yep, and like Greg is saying, the um... The discovery process, it's not you assume what is engagement, what makes engagement, you ask the data. Thank you for uh, persevering, Lisa. We have another issue at an independent school. We have people who are new to this country in philanthropy and many have started to accumulate wealth. I've begin, been on to my gift officers to start early with their donors and show appreciation and to reach out immediately when there is even the slightest amount of bump in their gifts. Thank you, Lisa. Actually, you're right. Um, uh, one of the things, one of some of the shops that I've been in, one of the things that we do is we mark uh, incoming parents whose kids went to an independent school because those parents are already trained, right? Air quotes, right? So, um, and then the other side of that is for people like me, I grew up poor. So when I made my first gift to Rockford College, um, I got three letters. Hey, welcome to the you know donor family. You know, we really appreciate it. And I started feeling the reverence or the you know, um, appreciation, right? Um, so I, I agree. Um, the, if, if, if I were, a, say, a family uh, from India and I sent my child over to your school, I would be tempted to give to my schools in India because India needs more schools. So if I gave to your school, um, I would need some kind of, you know, recognition or some kind of appreciation. Um, so, by the way, the CIA has a culture handbook. Why am I talking about the CIA? They have a culture handbook. So I'm thinking about, you know, one of my former staff members who was from India and how to approach them. So when you remember when Bill Gates and uh, Warren Buffett went to China and all the Chinese businessmen suddenly didn't want to meet with them because they were afraid that Warren and Bill were going to say, give us, give away all your wealth. And they didn't know that they were going in, making that impression. India is one of those countries where you have to, like your daughter has to be married to my son in order for us to be comfortable talking to you. So you have, that's a networking thing. You have to find the person that will let you uh, in the room, uh, the family member who will connect you that way. Um, so that's your other piece. And so then how do you honor the parents, right? So in Korea, the most important thing is saving face. How do you honor the parents and tell them that their gift was, you know, entirely remarkable, even if it was $10? It's the same thing. So I think it's the CIA culture handbook. Um, I found it very, I, I had to do some work because we were talking about how do we build a foundation office in different countries when I was at Cornell. So I discovered that. 
Well, yeah, that's a nice challenge. I like that challenge. I hope you will tell us more about it as uh, time goes on. Send us emails. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks for coming. Um, I hope you all uh, come back and join us in March when maybe the, the people will not have already started going on a chocolate buzz. <laughs> And blow up our session, we'll have more conversation. <laughs>